Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergaga.com and in this video we are going to look at importing data from the web into Excel and how simple that can be nowadays because we can use the Power Query feature to both import it but also if necessary make some simple transformation steps. Now for this example, if I switch to my browser, I am looking at this data. I have some exchange rate information for the British pound from this xrates.com website, and I'm interested in this second table, ignoring the top 10, but where it lists in alphabetical order the exchange rate for a bunch of different currencies. And I'm just looking at that first column. I'm not going to use the second one. Now I'm just going to take a copy of that URL in advance right now. So that when I switch back to Excel into this blank spreadsheet that I have, I can click data and look at all this good stuff on the left hand side. One of them from web. Now this is an area that's changing quite regularly. So depending on your version of Excel, it might not look exactly the same as mine. But as I click this, that's going to start and prompt me for the URL. And I already copied it. So I can just do Control V and paste that URL into this area. So we have a basic and an advanced options here. Just keep them with the basics. Click OK. That's going to connect to that website. And it's going to throw up a preview and also ask me what information from that page are you actually interested in. So I've got the opportunity at the top there to select multiple items. I'm not interested, just the one. What I do need to know though is what one is it. Now if I click on document, preview on the right shows me that that is the entire page. I also have this web view option. Oh yes, it's all that stuff. Let's come back out of it. <laughs> Next one, that's the top 10 list. Next one, that's the one I want. That is it. You can see the names here, it doesn't really give that away. Maybe the one in the middle is not too bad, but you can imagine you've got quite a busy web page and you might have a much bigger list than this. You may have to look at the previews to see what is the bit that you want. Now down the bottom, I've got the opportunity to load that straight into Excel or to transform data. Once again, if your, your version of Excel might not be looking exactly the same as this as well. It changes quite a lot, but I'm going to click on transform data. And it's always a good habit really to do that rather than load it straight in. Now I'm not planning on doing a whole bunch of stuff to this right now, to be honest, but it's a good habit at, at the least so you can come in here see what it looks like make any tweaks if there's any issues with it and this is pretty much what I want straight away but I've got the opportunity of renaming some of the headers if I don't like that so I might just double click on that second header and call it exchange rate and I said I wasn't interested in the third column so I might right mouse click on that one and remove it and then on the right hand side, I have a name for this query. And I'm hoping to use this query a lot more in the future. So I'm going to give it a better name and I might just call it rates. I'll press enter on that. And it may be for one last step, because you can see you have a lot of decimals here. I'm going to, with that column selected, choose transform, come over to the rounding button and ask it to round these rates to two decimal places. So when I click OK, let's now round it to two and tidied it up a little bit, and I'm happy. But we could go through a lot more transformation steps at this point if we felt it was necessary. From here, it's a case of loading it back into Excel. Home tab, close and load, close and load two, so that I can select whether I want it just as a connection, because I may be looking at using a power pivot for further modeling, but I'm just going to put it as a table, and I'm putting it in the existing worksheet, cell A1, 
click OK, in it comes. There it is, straight into a table, which you could always restyle or do whatever you wish with. Query on the right hand side, 53 rows. At this point, I can always select the numbers in column B and apply some formatting in Excel because the option I chose to round them in Power Query, that's just working with the number. It's not necessarily what it looks like, what obviously by rounding it does affect what it looks like, but it's more about the effect on the number when you're dealing with data types and you're dealing with rounding. Now I'm looking at the appearance and I'm just going to ask it to round this number uh, as a number to two decimals. So it tidies it up a little bit. So for the Danish currency, it did say 8.3, it's now 8.30. So a little bit more consistency. With that done, I can use this as much as I wish. Obviously exchange rates are going to change regularly. So when needed in the future, I can just come back up to data tab, refresh these queries, I could have more than one, and it will fresh and bring in the new values. And you might have noticed a, a quick little change there. Still 53, but even if this was to grow or shrink as a table, which is not going to be a common thing, but if it happened, then you know, that would also just grab the new data from that website. So very simple nowadays in the more modern versions, Although it's always been something we can do to grab data from the web. Now the web is can be a little bit of an unreliable place, depending on the structure of the web page and, and how, how it's been done. So there are other techniques, but if it's already in the table, like this is, very simple to do. We can perform some transformation steps on the way, and then most importantly, refresh it with the click of a button moving forward. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.